Hi students, this is Dr. Uma Mageshwari, Assistant Professor, PG and Research Department of English, St. Joseph's College of Arts and Science, Kadalur. This video is for the paper Shakespeare. In this video, we are going to discuss the summary of Macbeth. Before discuss the story, let us discuss the characters one by one. Duncan is a king of Scotland. Duncan the king has two sons, Malcolm and Donalbian. Macbeth and Macduff are generals of the king's army. Banco, Lennox, Ross, Mentier, Angus, Caitness. These people are noblemen of Scotland. Banco's son is Fleance. There is a character, Seward. Earl of Northumberland and his son named Young Seward. Satan, an officer attending on Macbeth. There is a boy, son to Macduff. The other characters are an English doctor, a Scotch doctor, a soldier, a porter, an old man, Lady Macbeth, Lady Macduff, gentlewoman attending on Lady Macbeth, Hecate, Three witches and apparitions. These are the characters in the drama. Let us discuss the act by summary. The king of Scotland was Duncan. During his time lived a brave lord called Macbeth, who was also a near kinsman to the king. Macbeth was held in great esteem due to his valor, especially after he crushed the rebellion assisted by the troops of Norway. While returning victorious from this battle, accompanied by another general Banco, they were stopped by a strange appearance of three figures like women. They had beards without skin and were widely attired. They did not appear to belong to the earth. Macbeth was saluted by the first one who addressed him as the Thane of Glamis. The general was surprised that she knew him. The general was more surprised when the second gave him the title of the Thane of Carter, for he had never been won. The third told him that he would one day be king. The three then turned to Banco and told him that though he himself would never rule, his sons would be kings. After this, the three figures vanished. The generals knew that they had met witches. The two were still thinking about the strange meeting when a messenger of the king arrived and told Macbeth that the king had made him the Thane of Corda. Macbeth was amazed at the words of the witches coming true so soon. His hopes soared and he started dreaming of becoming king of Scotland. Banco warned him to keep his hopes under control for witches may be correct in predicting small things but betrayed people into deeds of greatest consequence. Macbeth was beyond advice for the witches had a profound effect on him. Now Macbeth narrated the story of the three witches to his wife and how soon after he was made the Thane of Corda. She was wicked but ambitious woman and did not mind using bad means to achieve greatness. Seeing that her husband was in two minds, she inspired him to murder the king. The king had a habit of visiting his nobility once in a while to show his graciousness. He arrived at Macbeth's house soon after his wife had instigated him to kill the king. The king was accompanied by his two sons, Malcolm and Dunalbion, and a number of thanes and attendants. Macbeth had a beautiful house and it was pleasantly situated. The king was pleased by the house. He was, however, overwhelmed by the hospitality of Lady Macbeth. She covered her murderous intent with smiles. She could look as innocent as a flower while she had the disposition of a snake. The king retired to bed early, being tired from his journey. As per the tradition, two grooms slept beside him in the state room of his chamber. He had earlier presented Lady Macbeth with an expensive diamond for her hospitality. In the middle of the night, when the whole world, including the king, was asleep, Lady Macbeth plotted to kill the king. She had to kill the king herself, she decided, for her husband was too kind to murder someone. She knew that he was ambitious yet had too many scruples and was not prepared to commit 
the ultimate crime to fulfill it. He had consented to murder the king, but she doubted his capacity to carry out such a task. Armed with a dagger, she approached the king's bed. She had made the grooms drink so much wine that they were drunk and became reckless of their duty to save the king. As soon as she saw the king's face, it reminded her of her father and she had no heart to kill him. She returned to confer with her husband, whose resolve had by now wavered. He considered that there was some message in his wife's indecision. He, after all, was a close relative and a subject of the king, and besides, he was at present his host. He could not possibly murder such a man. Moreover, the king had been just and kind towards his subjects, and more so towards him. He had honoured him to reach a position of high esteem. Lady Macbeth found her husband's resolve weakened. She inspired him by assigning reason upon reason as to why he should accomplish what he had already resolved. She told him that the deed was easy and would be over soon. Not succeeding, she accused him of covered eyes. She then switched over to the practicality of shifting the blame on the drunken grooms. She finally succeeded in infusing enough courage in her husband to accomplish the dreadful business. Macbeth, dagger in hand, softly strode to the room where the king slept. On his way, he saw another dagger in the air. Its handle was towards him, and its blade and tip had blood. He tried to grab it, but met with nothing but air. He controlled his fear and entered the room where the king slept. With one thrust of the dagger, he killed him. Just then, one of the grooms laughed in his sleep. The other cried murder, with the result that both grew, the grooms woke up. They said a short prayer and went back to sleep. Macbeth thought that he heard another voice which cried sleep no more. Macbeth doth murder sleep, the innocent sleep. The voice continued, Glamis hath murdered sleep, and therefore Codder shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Horrified Macbeth returned to his wife. Seeing him, she thought that he had returned without murdering the king. She told him to wash the blood of his hands. She took the dagger from his hand in order to stain the groom's cheeks with blood. In the morning, Macbeth and his wife pretended enormous grief. Despite the proof against the grooms, the suspicion fell on Macbeth, who had a real motive to kill the king while the grooms had none. The two sons of Duncan fled. Malcolm sought refuge in the English court, while the younger Donalbian escaped to Ireland. With the sons not to be found, Macbeth has crowned king. Macbeth and his wife could not forget the prophecy of the sisters. They had said that Banco's children and not Macbeth's would be king. This rankled them incessantly. The two decided to murder both Banco and his son. They invited all the chieftains to supper in honor of Banco and his son Fleans. Macbeth placed his men on the route that Banco was to take at night so that they could murder him. They stabbed Banco, but Fleance escaped. From that same Fleance descended a race of monarchs who afterwards filled the Scottish throne. At supper, the queen was a gracious hostess. Macbeth told his friends that all who were honourable in the country were present under one roof, save his good friend Banco. Just then the ghost of Banco appeared and placed himself at the chair which Macbeth was about to occupy. Macbeth, though brave, turned white with fear. The others who could not see the ghost were perplexed as to why Macbeth was staring at an empty chair. The queen reproached her husband, whispering in his ear that he should not indulge in the same fancy which made him see the dagger in the air when he was about to kill Duncan. Macbeth, transfixed the, by the ghost, was unable to hear his wife. The queen, fearing that their secret would be revealed, hurriedly dismissed the guests, making her husband's illness an excuse. The queen and Macbeth worried that Fleance had escaped. Macbeth decided to seek out the weird sisters. The first told him to beware of the Thane of Fife, Macduff, of whom Macbeth was already extremely jealous. The first spirit had the likeness of an armed head, 
the second looking like a child told him to be brave the third spirit arose in the form of a child wearing a crown with a tree in his hand the spirit confronted macbeth and told him that he will not be defeated until the wood of birnam should come against him to dunsin and hill macbeth asked the spirits if banquo's issues shall ever be the king suddenly eight shadows like kings passed macbeth banquo marked with blood was the last shadow macbeth understood that the first seven by banquo's prosperity and who would be kings of scotland after him the witches suddenly vanished leaving macbeth in dread he stepped out of the cave and heard that macduff the thane of fife had fled to england to join the army which under malcolm was planning to replace him from the throne with malcolm enraged macbeth killed macduff's wife and children and all who were remotely related to him this deed of cruelty had been done by macbeth once too often all his nobility turned against him some fled and joined malcolm and macduff who were now approaching with a powerful army the queen who was his sole companion and in whose company he found some respite from his terrible dreams died she unable to bear the guilt it is supposed to took her own life macbeth was left alone with not a person to whom he could go for solace he became tired of living and wished for death the approach of malcolm's army aroused in him the last remnants of his almost forgotten courage besides he had heard the witches and thought that no one could kill him till birnam would came to dunsinan one day a messenger came to him and said he was standing at his watch on the hill and saw the wood of birnam move macbeth remembered what the witches had told him he decided to come out of his castle and fight the army that had by now reached his doorstep macbeth poorly supported fought with valor and fury he killed many till he came to where malcolm malcolm was fighting knowing the caution of the spirit he wanted to avoid macduff who was fighting close by macduff however had seen him he confronted macbeth and accused him of killing his wife and children macbeth remembered the words words of the spirit they had also told him that he could only be killed if the woods of birnam came to dunsinan and by not born of a woman he knew thus that he need not fear macduff a fight ensued in which macduff killed macbeth he cut his head and presented it to the lawful king malcolm who became the king among acclamations of the people of scotland thank you